Dairy farmers Bruce and Bronwyn Jensen produce premier bulls, with around three bull calves each year picked up by genetics company LIC. The Jensens have produced two top premier sires for LIC, Green Mile Milan and Green Mile T-Rex. Bruce explains how their farming system operates and how they came to have one of the industry's leading breeders knock on their farm gate. We've got 300 hectares, we're running 730 cows. We've got a small runoff of 80 hectares where the young stock run. We're a system one, system two operation. So we only uh, bring in a little bit of grass silage and uh, no meal, uh, no maize silage, uh, only palm kernel in an emergency and almost no nitrogen is applied either. We apply a bit of potassium instead, which helps your clover grow. And we farm to the conditions, effectively. So we don't try and carve in July. We carve in the middle of August, you know, three weeks or a month before the grass starts to grow. When I went share milking on my own, I bought my uncle's herd, which was predominantly a Jersey herd. And we've only really had a few crossbreds in the last five to 10 years when we expanded from 200 cows up to 650. It's been an interesting ride, really. We had a contract cow uh, back in 2003, uh, and at the time we decided to flush it, and we flushed two or three cows just to have a go and see how it went. Um, that cow did uh, one bull calf, which was sold up to Hamilton, up to LIC in Hamilton. But she also had five heifer calves, and they became the foundation for a very, very good herd here, a very good family of cows here. Um, and now there's probably 20 or 30 of them, and they're all good. We do our embryo transfer work just ahead of plan starter mating. So I tail paint about four to six days early, and those first four to six days, we're taking heats to use as recipients for our embryo work. Then the main mating starts. We mate for about five weeks with AI. I go through the LIC Premier Sires team and I pick out the bulls I don't like and I nominate them out of the team, uh, usually on the basis of temperament or others. After five weeks of AI, the bulls go out uh, we have teams of five bulls in each herd and a spare team of five bulls. They're in for about a month and then we uh, pull the bulls out and go back to AI and we're using short gestation AI for about two weeks and that brings those last two weeks of mating forward by two weeks in terms of calving. Uh, and for example, we had two cows calve on the same day. Uh, one was a natural mating to the bull one was a short gestation mating. Their mating dates were three weeks different. Uh, and that's the effect that, that short gestation semen can make. And substantially that means, you know, we haven't induced cows for 20 odd years. We essentially just use tail paint to determine when they're in season. We also mate the yearlings. We start them about 10 days ahead of the herd. And up there we're using the scratchies on them because they don't ride as heavily and as hard to scratch off tail paint as well. Uh, and so we just draft them up, normally about 60 of them, uh, and we do that uh, as they come in season. So we're not using reproductive technology on them, we just mate up there for 22 days as they come on. Our empty rate we got this year was 12.7% in the herd and about 8% in the yearlings or rising two year We'd hope to be under 10% if we can. This year we found a BVD positive cow about a month before mating through the VAT test. We had to identify that and get rid of it, and so that may have had some effect on this year's result. There's not really the opportunity for dairy beef uh, because we've got jerseys. No one really wants the Taranaki Tigers, those stripy Hereford looking things. and and. Sticking Herefords over Jersey cows gives you too many calving issues, too many cows with paralysis. It's just not worth the extra hundred bucks you get for the calf to wreck the cow. The bull teams that we're receiving now are substantially different to what they were 10 or 15 years ago. They've bought 
live weight and body condition score and fertility all into the mix and into the part of the breeding worth in this last five years. And I think it's really going to create a huge difference in the heifers we're going to milk in three to five years' time. I've always had very good records, and you do need very good records to do the contract work. But we don't farm any different. Those cows that are contracted aren't treated any different to the rest of the cows. Uh, you can't have a more special mob when you've got this many cows. They're just out there with the rest of them and have to compete with the rest of them in the system. When we come to calving, I split the mob a couple of weeks before calving, and I have three mobs. Uh, the first mob are contract cows, where if it's a heifer or a bull being born, I'm saving it because it's either a contract bull or I want the heifer. And then there's a big group of, I'm going to save the heifers out of them, so that's mob two. So I save all the heifers. So if, so if I'm confused as to which cow it's out of, I know I still want the calf, so I still tag it. And then there's a third group, or a third herd, of calves I don't want, whether they're a heifer or a bull. And that just simplifies the system for me. It certainly gives you a better focus on where your top animals are and just how good your animals can be. But generally, the, the basic cow here isn't much different to anyone else. Everyone's got two generations of AV breeding behind their cows. We've probably got four or five or, or more, but basically they're very similar to the national herd. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.